Dear students, in today's module, we will be further discussing functional paradigm of programming language. So remember this picture where we have the functional paradigm, object-oriented paradigm, imperative paradigm and declarative paradigm. We have discussed imperative and declarative paradigms in the last modules and today we will be discussing the programming practice using functional paradigm and the languages are like Lisp. So the functional paradigm is basically the program is viewed as an entity that accepts some input and produce some output. So mathematicians refer to such entities as functions. So they consider that functions are accepting some input and they are producing some output. And this is one of the reason that this programming paradigm has been given the name of functional paradigm. So the program is constructed in functional paradigm by connecting smaller predefined program units. So these are pre predefined functions. So that each unit's output are used as an other unit's input in such a way that the desired overall input to output relationship is achieved. So let's have an example. So here is a program written in imperative paradigm which we have discussed previously. We have total credits is assigned by sum of all credits. So this means all of the credits and their sum should be put in a variable name known as total credits and then old balance and total credits should also be added to form the temporary balance and then total debits are sum of all debits and then balance will be temp balance minus total balance so this is the imperative paradigm which we have learned previously and let's see we want to translate the same function using functional paradigm so we will write that we have three inputs, old balance, credits and debits. So these three inputs are not visible here in the imperative paradigms by looking at only one stage layer or instruction, which is actually are very visible in the functional paradigm. Then it is saying that old balance and credit should be summed up and all debits should be summed up and then the difference should be found and we have the new balance as a final output. So by reading all of these instructions, instruction number 1, instruction number 2, 3, 4, it was a little bit difficult to realize and organize the thoughts that this is a program that accepts three inputs and one output of new balance. So such a thing is very clear and according to the human memory and human nature that human normally try to understand things in such a small unit that this the output of this unit is going over here and this is going over here and so on. So all of these things are really very easily realized and understood by the humans. So if we summarize today's module, we have learned about functional paradigm, we have discussed its working and we have seen an example that how the program written in imperative paradigm can be retranslated and rewritten in functional paradigm that is really very easy to understand by the humans.